When we play 40k, we put so much effort into getting together a fully painted army. And having a fully painted army is one of the best things that you can see on a tabletop. But why stop at the army? Today, we're going to make a fully custom 40k victory points tracker. And I'll show you how after this. Pickle job! Pickle job! Hello and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name's Josh and today we're going to be making a custom 40k victory point tracker. Now I'm making this for my 40k salamanders army, but there's nothing to say that this even has to be for 40k. You can do this for Blood Bowl or Age of Sigma or whatever other games you want to play. The idea is to create something that looks cool and fits in with your army or team or just whatever will look cool on the table. The main part of this build will be this double dial counter. Now if you're a dab hand with this kind of DIY then you can probably make these yourself. I however am not so I buy these from Charlie Foxtrot Miniatures. They do a few different kinds so pick whichever best suits the game that you're playing. I've never had anything but good experiences with Charlie Foxtrot and I can't recommend them enough. There's a link to their store down below. Now I'm priming these all up with the Halfords Matte Black Spray. This counter is going to be for my Salamanders army, all of which are based on lava themed bases. Yes, I'm that original. To add this to the base, I'll be using my old cracked lava base method, though in a few select areas rather than all over the thing. When adding lava effects to things, I start with a darker red as a base coat, then work up through a brighter red, an orange and a yellow, and finally in very select areas I add a little bit of white. I'll list all the paints and products that I use below, though similar colours and other brands will work just fine, so no need to worry about getting the exact same ones as me. Once I've painted a few patches in the lava colours, it's time to add the cracking effect. For this, I'm using Modern Earth from Citadel. I'm just applying this to the lava areas, leaving the rest of the base clear for the basing material later on. I'm not putting this on too thick, as I don't want the cracks to be too big. Now, once I'm happy enough with the coverage, this part can go to one side while I work on the main decoration. The main decoration being these teeny tiny 3D printed marines. Now I was sent these by Dan from 11th Legion, thank you very much Dan, and he got these from Thingiverse. They are really fun little pieces and they're perfect to use in tiny builds like this. There are plenty of different designs for other races too, but if this isn't your thing or if you don't have a 3D printer, you can still make a custom counter. I made this one a few years ago for my Dark Eldar and I had a lot of fun putting it together to show off their well-known sadistic side. For the marines on this build, I want them to look similar enough to my army, so I went with the same colours that I usually use, but obviously on a much smaller scale. So it was a Wraithburn base coat followed by Warp Lightning Contrast Paint, a spot of moot green with a touch of yellow here and there for highlights, and these were looking pretty good. Now I added some black contrast paint for the backpacks and for the shoulder pads, worked on the guns, added in a little bit of flame on the shoulder pads and yeah that was pretty much it. These didn't take long to paint at all. 10mm is a scale I'm becoming more and more interested in with a few projects currently in the works. I've always put off starting doing anything on this smaller scale but you know what, it's actually pretty fun. With the marines finished, it's simply a case of adding the marines to the base. To add these, I'm just using a spot of super glue. I added a bit of black paint around the bases as well, just to help them blend in with the top of the counter. Once that was all dry, it's time to add the finishing steps. For this, I'm using the basing glue and the Grimdark City Rubble base ready from Geek Gaming Scenics. I want to leave the cracked lava areas exposed so the glue is going on the other areas, overlapping on the edges of the cracking to blend the two parts together nicely. Once the glue is down, I add the base ready, focusing more on the finer stuff rather than the bigger chunks. Once the top of the counter is dry, it's just a case of quickly putting everything together and then getting the glamour shots. 
Making things like this, accessories for armies and teams, is a lot of fun. It can also be a nice palette cleanser in between painting units for the armies themselves. It's a much sleeker solution for keeping track of victory points or score than just using dice or paper and can give you an opportunity to stretch your other hobby muscles and get a little bit creative. What do you think to the end result? Let me know in the comments below. That's going to do it for this one guys, if you enjoyed the video then be sure to leave a like down below and if you want to help support the channel there are our affiliate links and channel sponsor links down below in the description. I live stream here on the Pickle Jar every Wednesday evening so if you're doing your own hobby and want to pop along and join in the chat then you are more than welcome. We also have a link to our Discord down below in the description where we share our work that we're working on at the moment and just generally talk about the hobby. Finally I'd like to say a massive thank you to all our current channel members. Pretzel, Andy Allen, Chaotic Painting, The Immersive World Crafter, The Hobby Corner, Frost and Fist, Caring Commissar, Amy Roo, Raven's Rook Miniatures, Mugwump, Big Meg Danskull, Wybird, and Tabletop Ready Minis. You guys are amazing and the support is massively appreciated, so thank you very much. If you'd like to become a member yourself and enjoy some of the cool perks that you get access to, simply click the join button down below. That's all from me and I'll see you next week with another video.